So, The Wheel of Time, season one, episode one. You go back, you give them a way to follow us. I can't allow that. Crossing that river would be foolish, and you are not a fool. Come on, do you really think she's any better than what's chasing us? Of course I do. Till then, though. The lady does shoot fireball, so let's try and stay on a good side now. <laughs> <laughs> and off this, we smash to black to the end of the episode. Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. We have a really good one for you today. Uh, it's Watt Wednesday, and the first Wednesday of each month brings us news from the Wheel of Time show. Uh, we got a video dropped today from the production team, and while it's fairly short, I can tell you there is a ton to break down here. So let's jump right in. Before dissecting the video, quick spoiler warning. This video will carry a spoiler rating of red, with spoilers only through the eye of the world, though, so if you finish the first book of The Wheel of Time, you are safe to watch. I'm going to break down the video released by the production team frame by frame, and I'll hit on all the little information that we can glean from this little short video all about the show. So this first section of the video is the cast arriving at the table read for episode one of the show. But there is something very interesting if you look closely at this opening frame. The close-up of the script says episode one, but curious enough, the title is blurred out so we can't see it. Rafe has previously released the title for the first episode as Leave Taking. So it's curious why they would blur that out now. Is it because they've changed the name of the first episode? Or did they just leave it off of this particular script? It does have table reads scrawled across it, so maybe this is a special script for that. But it is interesting. I wonder if they did change something. As we move on, we get a name tag set down on the table, indicating that the actors will have assigned seating at the table read. Hold on to that thought because we are going to come back to that one in a minute. After this, we move to various shots of the cast arriving at the shooting location. Not much to see here other than Marcus looks significantly thicker than he did in the previous pictures of him. It's possible that he's bulking up for the role. The other takeaway, not necessarily show related, is that they're doing the table read at Art Restaurant Manes. I probably butchered that in Prague. I don't know a ton about it, but it seems to be a really nice restaurant with some cool art from what I can find from Google. I'd love someone in the comments from Prague that knows of this place to fill us in some more. We also get a shot of the cast mingling here as they file in, and we do have a shot of Rafe at the head of the table sitting next to Uda Bresowitz, the director of the first episode and one of the producers of the show. We can see the other name tags along the table, indicating assigned seating for the read. Again, more on that in a moment. Let's keep going with this analysis. So, The Wheel of Time, season one, <clears throat> episode one. So we have an off-camera person announcing that this will be episode one that they're reading. And then we get some shots of the cast clapping and generally just being excited, as I would be if we were starting the show. But here we have probably the largest takeaway from the entire clip. Right there, although unconfirmed, appears to be Michael Mickelhatton, who is best known for his role as Roose Bolton in Game of Thrones. Again, this is unconfirmed by production, but this is pretty clearly him. So this would lead us to the next question. If that is him, who is he going to play? Well, this is where those name tags come in, and we have to do some deduction here based on what we see. For one, it appears the main cast were all assigned to sit at the end of the table near the window, and then we have Rafe and Uda at the other end of the table uh, with the wall in their background. We also know that this table read is for the first episode only, so those that have speaking lines in that episode will be seated around the table. Now, normally at a table read, those with more lines will be seated at the table, and there may be some people with one or two lines that surround the tables and the chairs behind. They could even be extras that say small things, and so they brought in a cast member just to read that part. It may not be the actor or actress that will be playing that person. So the fact that we have Michael Mecklehatton seated at the main table implies that he has a speaking role in this episode. So, assuming that there are no major changes to the story, in the first episode, which based on the dialogue that we hear here in a moment, doesn't appear to be the case. It, again, it doesn't look like they're changing too much. 
then he can really only be a couple of characters. I think the main two that he could be would be Tam Althor or Tom Marilyn. If I had to place a bet, I would say that Michael Mickelhatton is being cast as Tom Marilyn, and here's my reasoning. We see quite a few folks with darker skin around the table, seemingly implying that since the majority of the first episode will be taking place in the Two Rivers, that that will be the theme that they run with. Two Rivers folks are going to be darker skin, which, looking at the previous casting, seems to be pretty true. Because of this, I would tend to think that Tam would be one of those people around the table, possibly the man sitting right next to Michael at the table read. So that would make Michael Tom Marilyn. Now, he's got a very deep and very powerful voice, and while Roose Bolton was a very hard, kind of evil man, uh, and maybe not what we think of when we think of Tom Marilyn, it's entirely possible that he is our Tom. And he would be really good at it. Again, that voice would carry. He can carry a scene. He's an outstanding actor. Uh, and again, it's not like his previous parts, but that doesn't mean that he couldn't do it. Now, if it's not him, and it is indeed Tam Thor, he's also going to be amazing at that as well. So either way, I'm pretty excited. You go back, you give them a way to follow us. I can't allow that. Crossing that river would be foolish, and you are not a fool. Come on, do you really think she's any better than what's chasing us? Of course I do. Do that, though. The lady does shoot fireballs, so let's try and stay on a good side, <laughs> And off this, we smash to black at the end of the episode. So here we have the first line readings from the show. We get a line from Rosamund as Moraine, speaking to someone about why they can't go back and talking of crossing the river making them a fool. So let me first say this. Rosamund sounds amazing as Moraine. She has that calm control down. And the more I hear from her, the more impressed I am with that hire. But let's get into the line itself and what that tells us. We can glean quite a bit about the direction of the plot from episode one just from this line. For her to be talking about trying to turn back and cross the river, that says that they have already crossed the River Tarn at this point, and more than likely, Moraine destroyed the ferry. That would be the source of the conflict and why she would need to say that. This is backed up by Joshua reading a line saying that Moraine is worse than what was chasing them, and obviously Egwene disagreeing with him. You can tell that they are setting up the inherent distrust for Aes Sedai and Moraine in general. It is that same gray area we find in Eye of the World. We then get a line from Matt seeming to break the tension. Uh, it's good to hear that Matt will provide some comic relief, and it seems Barney is going to do a really good job of playing him. I was very excited to hear him read a line, and I thought it sounded great. Then we get back to the off-screen man who's narrating the screenplay for the table read, saying that they will smash to black at the end of the episode. Now, that's a device in television that's typically done for some type of cliffhanger ending. So there'll be some dramatic thing that happens and fade to black, cut us off, and leave us wanting more. So the question is, what the heck is that cliffhanger? The second episode title that we were given way back is called Shadows Waiting. And assuming that that hasn't changed, what would that mean for the way this episode ends? I'm very curious what you all think. Definitely let me know in the comments below. So there's quite a bit that can be pulled from this little short video, and it's super exciting that we're getting closer and closer to the release of the show. My reactions to the video were a good bit of excitement. I loved hearing Joshua talk as Rand, hearing Barney as Matt, and then seeing Moraine do her thing. I would love to have gotten some lines from Marcus. Uh, I was very impressed with him uh, watching his other stuff previously to this when I heard that he was cast. So I wanted to hear him talk as Perrin because they talked up his audition so much. Um, but even though we didn't get to hear him talk he certainly is looking more bulky than he was previously, and I think that's a good sign. It's also exciting that we may have a Tom or a Tam. I've heard some people speculating that Michael Mickelhatton, of course, I may be butchering that name, so, you know, get at me. Uh, but he could be playing uh, uh, Jeff from Bornhold or Gareth Brynn. And while this could be true, because we don't know the order of the filming and what all they're putting in the first episode, my guess is that he isn't going to be them. There's too much that needs to happen in the first episode for the White Cloaks to be introduced here or Camelin. They're going to be going all the way from, two ri from the Two Rivers after Winter Night has happened. They're crossing the river. They're on their way, and then something needs to set up a cliffhanger. I just don't see all of that happening in an episode and then them jamming in a bunch of other stuff into the first episode. So it wouldn't make sense that the White Cloaks come in. It wouldn't make sense that Camelin's in. But what do you guys think? 
Let me know what you were able to pull from that short clip and if there's anything that I missed. Are you more excited for the show now than before? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to check out my Patreon if you want to support the channel. That really is the best way for you to help us out. You can find that link and the link to my Discord server in the description below. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to be updated when I release new content. Hey guys, until next time, thanks for watching and peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on the rope of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?